All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. So today I'm gonna show you a little Q and A I did with Steve. Sorry, now I'm sure you're all aware by now, but I went and Kelly for Steve for three weeks, and he's sort of been a guest on the channel this past year, and he's gonna be a guest on the channel again this year. We're gonna do lots of stuff together, of course, vlogs and bits and pieces. We're possibly going to South Africa, maybe. I'm not sure what's going on at the moment, but trying to get out there, sort of like end of February, it's all up in the air at the moment. But since it's been a while since he's been on the channel, I thought I would um, put the Q and A out on Instagram, and I picked ten of the questions from you lot. So here it is, this is 10 questions. Apologies if the sound quality and the video quality is not as good. It is a Zoom call and we are doing it like on iPads and laptops. But I tried to pick the best questions that gave like the broadest base of things to talk about. Um, and you can also get a little update on what he's up to. So enjoy the video and I will be back tomorrow for an, I, that's, that's a big lie. I will be back in the next few days for another one. Any diet questions? Uh, yeah, I think there's a few. Here we are then. So Steve, do you just wanna, give them a little insight, like a very brief insight, obviously not to cover anything that the questions may ask into where you are at the moment, what you're up to. Well, come to Dubai to what I thought was the practice for going to South Africa. Uh, but since then, South Africa, has can well, postponed the tournament still March. So yeah, I'm probably going to stay in Dubai for a couple of weeks and practice uh, whilst I can rather than be at home in lockdown. Yeah, it's not the worst place to be really, is it? No, 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 very lucky. I reckon there's about 150 questions here, so you're very, very popular, mate. Well, most of them were me, to be fair, mate. Right, so starting with Chris Privet at 10, what tournament slash tours are you going to be playing in 21? Uh, I'm predominantly going to play Sunshine Tour. Uh, our new season is now starting in March, so I'll play... 70% Sunshine Tour, maybe a couple of Challenge... Well, three of those events are Challenge Tour. Uh, in South Africa, and then some Jamaica and a few Euro pros in the summer back home, and then come back out to South Africa, uh, sort of October time, and do that from October through till uh, March next year. Right, are you with Zane out there, by the way? Uh, I've seen Zane, I'm not with him, but I've seen him out here. He's, he's asked, two iron, or has he admitted defeat and put a hybrid in? I've got well, at one stage, I did have three hybrids in my bag the other year. I've now got it down to one. So, um, yeah, no, I'm definitely uh, hybrid, not too iron. Con Lions 11. Best way of moving on after a bad shot? Uh, well, just sort of, yeah, accept it for what it is. Try not to overthink it. Um, also, like, the way you react to it. I'm sure you've seen South African, you know, the guys on a bad shot, it's... Not really a big deal. They don't, don't you know, they might have a little two minute or 20 second little head off and then they're back chatting to the caddy or chatting to someone else in the group and yep. trying to trying to just not really focus, just accept it for what it is. It's a bad swing and, you know, I would generally blame you when you were caddying for me, so I had a good reason. But, yeah, not, not make a big deal out of it. If you attach too much emotion to it, then you remember it more and yep. more overthink it. And then it builds and builds and builds. So yeah, just accept it's a bad shot and try and try and forget about it really. So what you really wanted to say was and chill out. But I'm yeah, come. have a All right, Harry Flowers asked a few. Mostly, oh, just, mostly just trying to slate me. Um, last one of them. How are you even alive after putting up with James for three weeks? Well. Yeah, that was quite tough. It was the haircuts. <laughs> the, the funny thing is about Flower is that he like has these fallings out with everyone. So I'll fall out of him, but he'll fall out of Connig and he'll fall out with other people. But he will always put that on the other person. So like, how do you put up with Connig? How do you put up with James? But there's like a common denominator in all of this that maybe yeah, Flower is actually quite hard work. No, I, I do remember you saying that before. He's He's the main ringleader in causing trouble. Yeah. Is that when I was slagging him off, yeah? Yeah, yeah, when you're slaughtering him. Yeah. Bennett, 07. Steve, what does post-tournament debrief consist of? Uh, for me, I normally do my stats on the stat system I use um, and try and sort of reflect on what I could have done differently, how I felt things went to what my stats say. Um, Maybe have a chat with my coach or like, you know, say like someone like you's caddying, you know, I'll 
ask you what I think or thought or did I do you think I tried to play the wrong shot or yeah. you know what mistakes did someone see externally that I made um, yeah just to try and even if it's a bad week just try and get the most out of what I can do the following week different yeah. um, or you know whether say like I don't have a very good practice round or like not, not playing wise but after the tournament I look back and think oh I didn't even notice that on that hole or around that green or something that I could have easily dealt with before the tournament was starting, if that makes yeah. sense. I think that's why you, well, you, when, when we're out there, you, we, the first week you obviously got a few videos of your swing, like when you were playing well, didn't you? And then you said, yeah, if I'm, if I, if it starts to go, you know, slightly erratic over the next few weeks, at least I've got that to look at and then check back in with. Yeah, which, Week, yeah, week three, that's what I ended up doing. Jesus! Uh, yeah, oh no. Yeah, me, I don't know how long this goes on for. Um, I'll, I'll go inside. Is this too noisy in here or not? No, it's still going on, isn't it? Yeah. I'll, I'll get a bit deeper. Jordan Murray, 1987. Do you think you will ever play in a major again? What's your belief? Uh, hopefully, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've only played one um, before. But, yeah, I've done... I think, like, the Open, I've probably missed, like, two or three shots uh, a couple of times in the last few years. And mm -hmm. I think, like, last... Two years ago, I had to birdie the last... Two holes, I think, to get into the US Open. Um, so, yeah, keep, I mean, they're quite tough because you've obviously only got, say, British Open's three spots from 90 guys at the final qualifying. Yeah. And I think US Open was probably seven or eight spots from 100 guys, but they're all mainly main tour, top 500 in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's quite tough to get through. But, yeah, no, I'd like to think so. So, I'd like to... Yeah. What I know now compared to what I knew then, I'd like to put it into action and see how, see how I get on, really. Uh, when Bilson, I guess that's Ben Wilson. What's the closest Steve has ever come to giving up on playing for a living? Wow. Well, <laughs> quite often. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I've had some tough times when, you know, you run out of money or mm -hmm. it's sort of... Uh, the worse you're playing, the more you need people's help, but then the harder it is to get people's help because you're... Obviously, not playing very well. When you're yeah. playing well, it's, things tend to fall in place quite a bit easier. Um, so yeah, no, quite a few times I've sort of thought, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do, and you know, thought about going caddying or something. Um, I mean, sort of years ago, quite often in the winter, I'd sort of work through the winter, stacking shelves or labouring or doing greenkeeping or bar work. Um, so yeah, quite often over the years. Um, but the last few years have been a bit more stable with income and sort of tournament results and yeah. feel like I've sort of steadied the ship a little bit, hopefully, touch wood. Yeah, you were saying to me, weren't you, like, you struggled a bit this year, obviously just playing the Jamigas where there wasn't much money up for grabs. Yeah, you know? I didn't play very well in the UK summer and going to South Africa financially was a bit of a stretch this year and obviously had a you know, one really good week and a couple other good weeks and yeah. in the space of four weeks, I mean, it's not, not life changing, but certainly you're uh, in a different position for the next few months, that's for sure, than what I was going into it. But I think loads of guys are like that. Everyone's, yeah. you know, even guys on the main tour, I think probably people think everything's paid for and they don't have any financial stress bar trying to keep a car, but... There's a lot of guys out there that are struggling quite a lot for, you know, to maybe even play the next week. It's not all free hotels, free flights, you know. These guys are incurring a lot of expenses that people don't see. Yeah, and it takes one, well, a couple of good weeks, isn't it? And then everything's changed. Yeah, no, exactly. ADEH, 1983. How long have you used Decade and what is the biggest thing you've learned from it? Uh, you I think I've probably used Decade like four years, mate. Yeah. Yeah, around four years. Um, probably the biggest thing I learned was 
how much I used to just literally play on instinct. And that, but that instinct would be one extreme to the other of either playing aggressive or super safe. There was nothing. When I was in between, I didn't really know what I was trying to do. Um, and sort of also probably how bad my strategy was off the tee of not measuring widths of anything and just whether it suits my eye or it doesn't suit my eye and where it's sort of retraining or using the same system every week is a lot better for me than playing by how I feel and trying to guess where I'm going to hit this golf shot to. And, and you say that's the biggest thing, yeah? It's just it keeps you doing the same thing each week no matter like what kind of formula. Yeah, yeah, it's one consistent thing and mm. also teaches you sort of quite a good relation as to what a good golf shot is and what a bad golf shot is. Yeah. Um, which I think sort of you don't quite understand a lot of the time because you react so much on how it felt and yeah. rather than the actual end result was it's gone to 20 feet but one can be a you know a thin necky cut to 20 feet and another one can be felt really good flushed but I'm like still both golf shots have gone to 40 feet or whatever there's but as a golfer you feel totally different about those two shots. Right Sean Wilson Davies will Steve be working on building more club and speed this year? Uh, yes, <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, Getting now, I can, no yeah, one yeah. I think I got one one seventy when we were um, Dunhill. So yeah, I'd like to try and get my top level up to say one seven five, and hopefully see my lower end level sort of get up above one sixty. Um, so yeah, I've actually I know it doesn't look like it, but I've been doing stuff in the gym and trying to sort of up my speed and up my strength. Um, but I mean, 25 years of not trying to hit the golf ball very hard is quite hard to get out of. I suppose I'm at the opposite end of you where you train for speed yeah, and then you're trying to train back down to hitting it straight, but yeah, then also fine. trying to train back up to use the advantage you have on, on being able to hit it a long way. Um, so no, I'm certainly trying to try up my ball speed and club head speed. Right, okay. This is quite a good one to get into for the last one. Right, Matt Van Der Peer. What does Steve think he explains his European tour performances since they were massive improvements? Well, I know what I should say. Obviously the caddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure really, far obviously your amazing influence. Um, yep. Yeah, because I haven't played very well in the summer here. Uh, I probably think maybe partly a little bit of no crowds probably helped, say, at the weekend at Joburg. Yeah. I'd probably felt a bit more comfortable with no one watching me. I mean, yeah, um, you were, what, like fifth from the last group or something, wasn't it? Yeah, last... which sometimes, you know, even if there's not a lot of people watching your group, because there's not many people watching the tournament in general, say, on... Mm the co-sanctions, if you're near the last group, there's still a lot of noise and a lot of people floating around and yeah, which sometimes can be quite inspiring if you're not playing very well, you're like, right, it's a, but I think also, I would say, would probably make me feel a bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, whereas, so like the British Open I played, that was totally different because there were so many people everywhere that it felt totally normal to have a lot of people on a hole and not that yeah. there was loads watching me, but you yeah, know, right. you, someone, 2,000 people walking along the side of a fairway watching someone else was quite normal, yeah. whereas the co-sanctions events. So I think that probably helped. Um, and I did a bit of stuff with the psychologist the week before, with Andy Morrison. Um, that helped, and I did quite a lot of stuff with my coach, uh, like Tom Motley in the weeks leading up. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, I sort of think a combination of those three things and and your uh, steady input. Well, like um, you were, I mean, I didn't really know what to compare it to for for you, but I'm watching you on the range, on the range, on the bench, on the range, um, and in practice rounds, you were hitting it like really, really solid. And I know you do generally hit it pretty consistent, but it was, you know, it was it was good, wasn't it? It was really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I felt. 
it's typical it's golf, you know, when it's going all right, it doesn't feel very hard if, if, if you know yeah. what I mean. I felt like I was doing what I should be doing. But then that, the reality is you're actually playing really well. But at that time, you feel like, well, that's what I should do. I should hit the fairway and I should yeah. hit the six iron to 30 feet. And um, yeah, so I'd say probably the crowds was probably the biggest difference I felt on the golf course. Because mm -hmm. um, I was like, that, that would be the only thing that would change the environment of playing would be the crowds being there. Not not that I'm saying I wouldn't have done well if there was crowds there, but it's another thing to contend with that yeah. I'm not particularly used to. Um, you know, sort of the last screen when we looked off, you know, there was 15 people around it, whereas, yeah. you know, normally there's a, I don't know, a thousand-seater grandstand around the back of the green. Although I would like people to be in there, it'd be quite cool. But, you know, it, it, tra it takes some away from the experience, not having crowds there. Yeah. So, well, I guess oh, nice putt the last hole at jo uh, um, Joburg Open, and you know, if there's a packed grandstand behind it, you get a massive roar, and some it's it's really nice. Yeah. Whereas I just had you quacking. <laughs> well, next year, then, eh? I guess. Yeah, hopefully so. Ho hopefully crowds. Hopefully golf of well, this year. Even. Yeah. Cool. Right. Well, thanks for the thanks for the answering the questions. No, that's right. Thanks for uh, yeah. Sky. Those a couple of questions. <laughs>